The late Alastair Gray is widely believed to be the author of the unofficial slogan of Scottish nationalism, work as if you live in the early days of a better nation. In fact, the line was paraphrased from the Canadian poet Dennis Lee, who wrote in his 1972 poem Civil Elegies, and best of all is finding a place to be, in the early days of a better civilization. To be fair, Gray never tried to disguise where the expression had come from. I have always attributed it to, Lee, he once remarked. But people started quoting it as if I had invented it. In the literary politics of Scottish devolution, voice, class, nation, Scott Hames, a lecturer in English studies at Stirling University, examines how Scottish cultural luminaries like Grey have shaped our national political discourse, both consciously and unconsciously, over some sixty years. Central to Hames's thesis is a demystifying attack on the official, idealised narrative of Scotland's journey towards home rule. The creation of Holyrood in 1999 wasn't just an organic, grassroots response to Thatcherism aimed at reviving Scotland's lost democratic structures, he argues. It was the product of a much grubbier process of institutional horse trading, whereby British politicians, mostly associated with the Labour Party, managed demands for Scottish autonomy in order to shore up the UK constitution and ward off a growing electoral threat from the SNP. Hames builds his argument around two distinct but routinely conflated concepts, the dream and the grind. The former, he says, represents the commonly accepted biography of Scottish self-government, a story of cultural vanguardism in which writers and artists play the starring role in the recuperation of Scottish national identity, cultural confidence, and democratic agency. The grind is much more prosaic. It explains the longer, thinner history of devolution as a shrewd saga of electoral expediency and legislative manoeuvring, starting with Harold Wilson's 1969 Royal Commission on the Constitution and ending with the 1998 Scotland Act. Hames charts the interplay between Scottish literary culture and the national movement in the last century, from Hugh MacDiarmid's neurotic self-construction in the 1930s and 1940s through to James Kelman's experiments with authentic Scottish vernacular in the 1980s and 1990s. The key moment of convergence occurred at the height of Thatcher's reign, he argues, when Scots voted consistently against the Tories but remained powerless to block her sweeping social and economic reforms. In the absence of effective political leadership, the responsibility for articulating a distinctive democratic landscape, liberated from conservative rule at Westminster, fell to writers and artists like Alistair Gray, William McKilvany, and Liz Lockhead, all of whom were influential Sue for more on this story. Visit the news article link.